Well. Oh, shit. We had to escape a flood. And we survived. <laughs> and we survived. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin with this story. We, our last video, we drove across the country in four days. It was really hectic. And we got to this beautiful RV park in North Georgia. But we didn't fit. We were too big. So we ended up going to... Waterside at Blue Ridge, which is actually in Morganton, Georgia. And we pulled in. We thought it was a pretty decent park. You could tell it's still very much under construction. This phase two, they call it, had a ton of lots that were still all gravel. They were working to get paved. Some of them don't have electricity hooked up to them yet. Still kind of a work in progress, but it had a pretty lake and we thought we were going to be good to go. Yeah, and we were kind of, we had this really awesome back end site, which was my first time backing in the massive fifth wheel toy hauler. But it all worked out, and we had a really small creek that was running behind our site. So it was really pretty nice. We mm -hmm. thought this was an amazing place, and it was beautiful weather. So coming from Utah to the south, it was 65, 70 degrees, no humidity. Perfect. Not so fast. <laughs> yeah, pump the brakes. We had one amazing night there. One night. And then the next night... We saw that there was a rainstorm coming with potential flash floods, but we didn't know that it would be as bad as it was. And I, it, it just started off, and I've, you know, I'm from the South. I've lived there most of my life. Uh, it rains a lot. Not that uncommon. Flash floods, of course, occur. But we were next to this really tiny creek, and we were maybe 75 feet away from this small creek. Right. So not even didn't even cross my mind as something that would potentially cause an issue. So having a kayaking background, mm -hmm. we understand that rivers rise and fall, and we've developed a couple little tricks to keep our eye on the river. Yeah. And so we were doing that. We were watching this itty bitty tiny creek that's very far away get closer and closer to our concrete pad. And so at one point, it was probably 8 p.m., mm -hmm. we went and stuck a rock at the line where the water was so we could gauge if the rock was covered, we might have to consider moving. We didn't think the rock was going to even get covered. And to be honest, this rain, I think it was like historical amounts of rain. We're talking like a foot of rain would actually occur. And so when it was raining, I mean, it had been raining all day heavy. And then it continued to rain heavy throughout the evening. And, you know, that the thing with flooding is... It doesn't necessarily, even when it stops raining or the raining subsides, that doesn't mean that the creek will not continue to rise. Right. So. So eight o'clock we put out the rock yeah. and we ended up actually on a phone call with a realtor and we're just like doing work. And at 9 p.m. still on the phone, someone comes knocking on our door. It's our concerned neighbor. Mm -hmm. And he says, guys. You gotta go. <laughs> yeah. And so it was interesting. Maybe about an hour before, one of our other neighbors who was in a Class A motorhome, they had just, you know, put it in drive and they just moved on up the hill to another RV site. Mm -hmm. um, and the management team at the RV park was not to be seen at all. They did call us around maybe earlier in the day, maybe, maybe six. Six. Yeah. Or, and they were like, hey, you know, it's raining a lot. If you guys want to change sites, you know, feel free. We can just. We can move you to another site if you're not comfortable in the site you're in. And we were like, well, no, we're fine. We didn't hear from them the rest of the night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At 8 o'clock, you mentioned the neighbor in the Class A had moved. And yep. there were people trickling out, just yep. kind of better safe than sorry. A lot of these people were from Florida, and they knew about these rising waters as yep. well. So they figured better safe than sorry. But at 9 p.m., our site was starting to get overcome with water. So
so the concrete pad I mean it was still at eight when we put the rock down it almost had a foot to go mm -hmm. in order to be even on the concrete pad so that last hour happened fast I mean you know I I it happened so fast and I couldn't believe the amount of water. Like I can't believe it even now that it actually got that high. I mean, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. At 9 PM, the water was just starting to lap onto our concrete pad and that was going to be okay. If it's just slightly there and touching our tires, we had moved everything that was closest to the river under the RV away from it. So we mm -hmm. thought that would be fine. What we were concerned with, was about three pads down, they were building a structure out of two by fours. So we were afraid that those two by fours, or they were might maybe even bigger, mm -hmm. like railroad ties, massive Basically railroad ties, yeah. pieces of lumber. We were afraid that the water was going to pick them up and sweep them into our site and cause damage. Yeah. And so that basically, and then what she said earlier, one of our concerned neighbors came over and he was like, hey, you guys got to go or you really should consider moving. And uh, that was when we basically went into action. Yeah, really quickly hung up the phone call, said, hey, we got to go. Let's let's start this. And, and did you even have the hitch in the truck? So that the whole thing is like we I we were so we were prepared to move like we had talked about it, but we were not prepared in the sense that we were physically not prepared. No, I think all we had done was loaded the boats into the back of the truck. Yeah. So at 9 p.m. we had to take the boats out. We had to put the hitch in and... Yeah, so I'm out there with a torque <sighs> wrench, you know, putting our Anderson hitch in, which fortunately it's an easy hitch to put in, but, you know, obviously not the best conditions when it's, you know, 10 p.m. and dark and raining. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty anxiety ridden almost we had to try yeah. and keep it cool i mean you don't really think about like depressurizing the water system so i was having a really tough time getting the hose unhooked and then we ended up not being able to get the piece out of the sewer hose so where the sewer connects from the rv park mm -hmm that part we just ended up having to leave open and not put the cap on. The cap flew away. Oh, uh, well, water. the whole the whole sewer area was completely submersed in water yeah. while we were disconnecting the system there. And, you know, it was so, it was happened so quickly that, you know, you're just walking in the creek at that point, which was now lapping up against our tires, which the biggest concern was if the water got up too high that it might push our RV over or off the leveling jacks. And so that's why we had to get out of there. But, you know, and then also we're talking electrical 50 amp cores are up there. You're pulling, you're messing with electricity in the water. Not a great thing to be doing. Okay, so this is where we put all of our stuff on high ground. You'll see it's underwater. So good thing we had time to rescue some of it. We threw it in the back. You can't even see our site anymore. It's completely been taken over by this river. And we're just throwing stuff in. We have a site up at higher ground. It's really straight chaos. <laughs> so all in all, you know, when we were kind of in this chaotic experience, we were just kind of looking at each other and we were just like, all right, remain calm. This is really stressful. <laughs> this is this is horrible right now, but you have to keep your cool because if you don't, then you could make this a lot worse. And so, or you can miss a step because the thing is you're still moving a 46 foot trailer. And so you, even though you have to get out of there as fast as possible, you don't want to make the matters worse by forgetting to put your jacks up or whatever it may be, peel off, break something, and then you're stuck there. Our leveling jacks were not auto retracting. We have the auto leveling oh, system. And that was the point when we were standing next to each other. And I remember looking at you and saying, go slow, go slow. And then we kind of just like got the level heads and we just kept doing what we knew we needed done. And it was a matter of setting priorities. We knew that we had to get out we knew that we couldn't take everything with us on the first trip. Mm -hmm. So we took all the things that weren't necessarily as important and we just walked them across the street, put them on higher ground further away from this former creek, now raging river. Raging river. <laughs> and came back to those later. 
Well, we tried to get back to our campsite to collect all the stuff we had put up a little bit on shore and of course it's flooded. Yeah, you can't even get back to the site that way. We have to like double back around because the whole thing is underwater. <laughs> Shit's crazy. Yeah, it's really insane. Yeah, and so what we ended up doing was, you know, first priority, get the trailer out of there, get to safety. And so all of our sewer hoses, like electrical cords, all of our stuff that we have stored out underneath the RV, we just put a little bit higher on the ground, pretty close to the RV site, but the water, it was going to take the water a little bit longer to get to that point. So we were going to come back to it. And so we moved the RV up up a hill, basically, to a little bit higher ground that was not going to flood. It was a paved site. Home sweet home. Highest ground in the park. Of course, we later found out that this site didn't have electricity. So great, <laughs> but it was paved and of course, no management at the Waterside RV Resort was to be around at all during this chaotic event. So anyway, we get the RV up there, we unhitch, and then we start doing trips back down to get our other stuff. And so we just go back down, we get all of our sewer hoses, electrical stuff. That's the part where, you know, during this whole process, you get covered in sewer. Yeah. Very just traumatic experience. Yeah, I believe it was when we got back, I remember saying, okay, the priority right now is to get our RV functional up top. So we need sewer hoses, we need water hoses, and we need power. Mm -hmm. And so I go to grab the sewer hoses, which of course we grabbed in a mad dash, didn't have caps on them, and they just leaked all over me disgusting so i had Gosh. to ride in the back of the truck with the sewer hoses in order to get back to higher ground well the sewer spilled on me so i am covered in shit so i have to sit on the back Yeah, it was not good. I mean, I know I got covered in sewer a little bit later in the night just because the way it all worked out. <laughs> just, you had you to know. run to the store to get gas because we had a gas can, luckily. We had a generator, luckily, but we didn't have gas for the generator. Mm. So as you were running to the store to get gas, I was hooking everything up, and I happened to step in a pile of fire ants because... It's nighttime and I don't see anything. And yeah, my legs and my arms ended up getting eaten alive. And by the time you came back, I had already stripped basically out of all of my clothes and hosed off with one of the hoses. And uh, at the, that point is when my mental state kind of started to deteriorate. Until then, I kind of thought it was a fun adventure, and I was trying to stay so positive, even though I was a little freaked out. But once I started to itch like crazy, I was over that night. Yeah, it was horrible. I mean, to be going to get gas for our generator, which... You know, one little thing that I could have probably been a little bit more prepared for, you know, was to have that. But fortunately, it was only about 10, 15 minutes to the gas station. Got that, came back. So that way we were able to take showers and stuff because, uh, you know, like I said, this, this site that we happened to go to because it was one of the only ones up on the hill away from the flooding just didn't have power yet because it was still under construction and none of the management team was there to assist us. So... Anyway, got gas in the generator. We were able to take showers, go to sleep, you know, kind of recuperate the next day. Mm -hmm. um, however, you know, that being our second day, it was just it, devastating. That's why I mean, we had to take, like, honestly, like six weeks off of making videos after this event because it was just like so much like hell. Yeah. It was, it was just so exhausting. And it was just after a drive across the country, then to experience that. Uh, was really pretty intense. Then we ended up moving to another site in the park that was also paved, one of the last ones. We were supposed to be a long stay, so they had limited options for us. Makes sense. But this one, the sewer 
connection. It was higher than the pad itself, so gravity didn't work. We had to do the snake every time we needed to dump. Mm -hmm. And so we called the park. We tried to talk to management and ask if we could just leave because this park didn't work out. Well, in some of those sites that we were at, uh, or the site that we were at where the flooding occurred, you know, the water had gone so underneath the concrete that they, they were actually doing construction, you know, when we were leaving along all of those sites because the concrete was originally poured too close to the creek. And so I guess there's a law or somebody said there was a law that concrete's not supposed to be poured, you know, poured within 50 feet of a water source like that. And so they were having to break up all that concrete, which was a very dangerous kind of situation because it could break off with your RV on it. Oh, they didn't let us back on that site because they said it was an unsafe site to be on mm -hmm. because the creek when it turned into a raging river, the current became so fast that it actually washed away the foundation under the concrete slabs. So these yeah. concrete slabs were jutting out along the creek without any kind of foundation under them. Yeah, all the gravel was gone. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so what she said, we were at this other site that we didn't want to be at, but it was kind of the only option available to us. And we mm -hmm. like we were being extended stay, planning to be at this park through almost September, I guess, with mm -hmm. maybe a little gap in between to go to Colorado. And well, we just were fed up with it. You know, we had all of these issues. We, you know, had the flooding event. They didn't offer, they didn't call or offer any sort of compensation for the nights of the flood. So that was really upsetting. And nor did they offer any sort of, um, you know, just emotional compensation or even talk to us and say, hey, we're really sorry. Nobody said sorry once. Nobody from the team reached out and acted a little empathetic. Nobody treated us like people. None, yeah. All the team said was that in the contract, we can move you for any reason at any time. And That's what you signed up for. Yeah, and then they went on to say that, well, we can't control the weather. I mean, they didn't, they didn't even once come to our site during the flood, which honestly, you know, I don't know, from our backgrounds, just to be in that sort of a, you know, it was a very dangerous situation that was going on. And we were, you know, both very fortunate to, you know, have remained calm and to evacuate safely. And also it was not during peak season, fortunately, and it was not during a weekend, fortunately. So there were not a lot of people on that side of the park. However, you know, that could have gone badly very easily and uh it was kind of you know pretty annoying to see that there was not anybody kind of taking control of that situation or directing anybody to tell them where to go i mean there was the one truck of people who i believe worked there he was part of the maintenance team mm -hmm. and I remember him asking are you guys owners or renters and as soon as we said that we were renters he just kind of like did away with us and yeah. like tried to, I don't, I don't know what they were doing, trying to make sure that the park was still, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And so honestly, like after all of that occurred and we were at this other site that we didn't like, we were like, you know what? We just want to go to a different RV park in the area. We want to get out of here. We didn't even necessarily, we didn't want our money back even for the nights we were there. We just wanted to leave and get our, you know, we just wanted to leave and just get our money because we had already paid the way they did the deposits there is you pay for your entire stay basically up front or half your stay. You pay for your first month up front and then half of the rest of your stay. Yeah. So, I mean, we were about $5,000. We had given it. them $5,000 because we were staying for the next, you know, six months or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And, uh, or maybe it's more than that. It was eight months. I don't know what it was. But anyway, we, we'd given them a lot of money up front, but we were okay with that initially because it was, you know, on the surface, a really nice park. And so we called them and they were so awful. They were so mean to give us our money back. They did not want to give us a refund at all. And we didn't want a refund. We just wanted to leave. We were going to pay for the nights that we stayed and mm -hmm. we just wanted to get our money back for the nights that we were not going to be there. Yeah. And... I mean, I would have at least liked an apology. Like, just yeah. say, like, I'm sorry. I mean, even I'm sorry that happened. Yeah. I'm sorry you had to go through that. I'm sorry our park was designed in a way where we let that happen. Yeah. But instead, there was no empathy. And I just felt like we weren't really treated well at all. 
No. And eventually they did end up giving us most of our money back. However, they refused to pay for 10 nights in which we were not staying there. Like, I guess, so it was a roughly $500 that they basically stole from us um, and they would refuse to give us back because they were saying that we didn't give them an early enough cancellation notice because of our reservation. Um, but it is what it is. We didn't want to support them anymore. We didn't want to be there anymore. And after that experience, you know, we feel like we had to at least tell other people about this resort. And, you know, it's on the surface of beautiful resort. It's a very nice park. They offer a lot of amenities. There's a pool, a pond. However, just be cautious of the potential, you know, management team there that, uh, and how they may treat you. Yeah. But overall, you know, uh, experiencing a flood with an RV, I would not recommend it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the creeks are beautiful, but yeah. <laughs> let them stay creeks. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, be careful if you go to Waterside RV Park in North Georgia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, we're going to hopefully be doing more videos again soon now that we've kind of recovered and stabilized here. So we'll see you guys later.